Marie Callender's apple pie, does it live up to its reputation? We'll find out today. Hi everyone, Mike here with Mike's Dessert Decision, your source for reviews of the store-bought dessert variety. And today we're looking at another apple pie in our series on apple pies. And we're looking at the Marie Callender's apple pie. Now if you're unfamiliar with Marie Callender's, they're a chain of restaurants and they're, I'm not sure where they are, but they're not around here. But they also carry a range of frozen food options and apple pie is one of them. So they have a pretty loyal following as far as I know, and they're known to be a pretty high quality item. So we're gonna look at this one today and see if it lives up to its reputation. Now before we look at the Marie Callender's pie and taste it and judge it, let's go over how we score our desserts here on Mike's Dessert Decision. We score our desserts on a scale of zero to 30, and in the case of apple pies, we score it on three criteria, appearance, crust and filling and each category gets a score of 0 to 10 and you combine those to get the final score on the pie. Alright so let's have a look at this Marie Callender's apple pie. It's a pretty decent sized pie. It comes in at 2 pounds 10 ounces. I paid $6.29 for it so you know it's a little bit pricier than your average pie. I think the Mrs. Smith's frozen pie was less expensive and I also I know the the great value frozen pie from Walmart was less expensive but like I was just saying this is a frozen pie you've got to bake it yourself at home and which is easy to do I mean they give you the directions right there so now we're going to have a look at it and see how it scores on appearance all right so looking at the pie as a whole I am not impressed really at all um it's got this lattice top on it it looks factory made, you know what I'm saying? Like it looks like it was done in a mass produced way. It doesn't look like a homemade pie. It looks small, it looks smaller than the size would suggest. The look of the whole pie is not very impressive. I don't think anybody's mistaking that for a homemade pie. Uh, so now when you take a slice out as we have here, it improves the appearance quality quite a bit. The filling looks a little odd. It looks definitely, these frozen pies all have this kind of caramel colored filling and this is no exception and it doesn't look particularly appetizing. It looks okay. The crust looks pretty good. If you look at it closely, it looks pretty, pretty flaky. Now when I made this pie, the directions called for baking it for a predetermined amount of time at a predetermined temperature and then taking it out and then sprinkling like a brown sugar mixture over the top and then baking it for another, you know, five or ten minutes. So when you look at the crust, it's got kind of a sugary, sugary coating on it, which may or may not add to the appearance. I don't think it really adds much. I don't know if it adds much to the flavor. We'll find out about that. But that was just a different quirk of this pie. So, and it, and it changes the appearance to a small degree. I'm not impressed with the pie as a whole and the, the slice is, is better than the whole pie, but still not, not terribly impressive. And I'm gonna give this a three out of 10 on appearance. A three out of 10 on appearance. Okay, now let's have a look at the crust and see how that rates. I'm going to try to get just some crust with no filling and see how that tastes. See how the texture is as well. You get a piece from back here. All right, so the first thing I noticed with the crust is that sugary coating that I was, you know, instructed to put on, which is kind of, gran you know, it's still granular. It didn't like caramelize or anything like that. It was, they told you to put it in for five minutes after sprinkling that on and it's still very granular. And it just, it just has a sugar flavor to it. So it's very sweet. The texture is okay on the crust. It's, it's not real flaky. It's got a little bit of flakiness on the top and then it's just got kind of a, a soft texture to it. But aside from the the sugary coating that's on the top, it doesn't have much flavor to it of its own. It's not buttery, it's not 
really doesn't taste like much of anything. It's kind of a bland crust. So the texture is okay. The flavor is not so great. And it's got that sugary coating on it, which I'm not a huge fan of. It's too granular. It leaves almost like a grainy taste, a grainy texture in your mouth in between your teeth, which is not appealing in my opinion. So the crust is not really that great to me either. So I'm gonna give that also a three out of 10, a three out of 10 on the crust. Okay, so nothing too impressive so far with the Marie Callender's apple pie. The appearance is pretty subpar and the crust didn't really impress me. They have a weird granulated sugar on top that I don't think adds to the pie at all. However, now it's time to taste the filling and along with some of the crust and see how that rates, see if that can salvage this pie for us. But first, as usual, a little bit of milk, cleanse that palate. Mmm, a little more. Okay, so let's taste this pie with the filling and the crust and see how it rates. One more bite. Okay, this filling. The first thing I noticed about it is the texture of the apples. They're pretty undercooked. They're a little more firm than I would like. And they're actually kind of tough. When I was, even when I was just trying to, to cut a piece off to take a bite, it was hard just to cut through the apples with the fork. So that's not really a great thing. And then the, the flavor is very pronounced cinnamon flavor. Not a lot of apple flavor, which as you know by now, I'm not a big fan of huge cinnamon flavor in my apple pies. You know, the flavor is, it's not unpleasant. I mean, it's cinnamon, so it's not unpleasant, but it's just not that strong apple flavor that I look for in an apple pie. Then you've got a, a real substantial amount of goop. There's, there's not, a, it's not bursting with apples and it's filled up with this goop, which we can try a little bit of it. It's very sweet, very sweet, very cinnamon, which isn't unpleasant, like I said, but it's not what I look for in a pie. I mean, these frozen pies tend to have this going for them, more of the goop than you find in the, the pies in the fresh bakery departments. So it's not totally, you know, a, different from the other frozen pies I've tried, but I don't think it's any better. And I, in fact, I think it might be a little worse than the Mrs. Smith's pie. It might be more on par with the great value apple pie. You know, it's a little disappointing because this is supposed to be a higher quality pie and it's a more expensive pie. You know, the flavor is, is not terrible. It just doesn't have an, a strong apple flavor and the apples themselves, really unappealing texture and not very much apple flavor, just really cinnamon and sugar. So that's very disappointing. To me, this is probably the worst filling I've had in an apple pie. And in that regard, I'm giving it a two out of 10 a two out of 10 on the filling. Okay, so that's the Marie Callender's apple pie. Not very impressive. It scored a total of eight out of 30. An eight out of 30 on the Marie Callender's apple pie. I'm gonna have to say, stay away from this one. It's too expensive and it's really not very good. Gotta cleanse the palate after that. A little milk. Uh, that's better. However, if you want to make your own pie, I strongly suggest you go that route. And if you do, check out the pie plate in the description below. It's the pie plate I use. And the most important feature that it has going for it is that it is huge. And if you're going to take the time to make your own pie, huge is the way to go. And if you like the video, consider subscribing and hitting the like button. And I would appreciate it. And I will see you in the next dessert review.